Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord to God, I greet everyone and the ones who are watching us with the peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite the brethren to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in Psalms number 57. Psalms 57. Amen. Psalm 57 says the following. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me. For my soul trusts in you. And in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. I will cry out to the God Most High, to God who performs all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me. He re reproaches the one who would sh swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth His mercy and His truth. My word has been an alert to you. And I tell you that the world is going through a trial, but my church is being preserved because I have prepared many blessings, many victories for your lives. Just trust and open up your hearts and place your praise to your God because many things I have done in our midst in these last days is going to be for you. A landmark in your lives. A remembrance. A message of what I have for your lives. Let's be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. The church may be seated. Glory to Jesus. My brethren, we live a moment in the entire world, an entire planet, an event that is affecting the entire planet, a crisis. There is a desperation, an, entire, an incredible fear. I don't believe that we have ha ever had something like that in the history of man. This fear, you are afraid of even taking take your car and going to the next city. There are crises, there are difficulties in the family, difficulties, the regional difficulties, but we are seeing now is something that is global. But it is interesting that the word, the Bible, was already speaking about that. We are not here trying to bring fear or even a certain relief. No, that's not our objective. We have no pleasure in speaking about this. But the word is prophetic. And the moment in which we are living is a consequence. It is the result of the prophecy. David, here in this psalm, David, here he describes a little bit of a moment, a difficult moment that he went through in his life. David, in this verse here, in this chapter, actually in this Psalm 57, David, he describes a moment of affliction that he went through. 
He was being persecuted by King, by King Saul. He was being persecuted. He wanted King, King Saul wanted to kill him. He runs away and hides in a cave called the Cave of Adullam. And there he pleads to the Lord for help. And this verse number one speaks exactly about what he was feeling. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me. When a person to a person to, in order for a person to pray in that way is because he was really afflicted. We can even notice here on his words. But the trust of David was not on King Saul to change his mind or because he was a, a valiant soldier or because he had been chosen by the Lord or because he had uh, soldiers to help him fight King Saul. No, the trust of David was in the Lord God. He had no other place to run to. And he went to seek refuge in the Lord, to, to seek the face of the Lord. And in the shadow of your wings, I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. In another psalm, it says this, Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. In another psalm, it says, the one who inhabits in the uh, all most high shelter, the, uh, he will rest at the shadow of the Almighty. My bread, in this difficult moment in which we are living, this moment in which there is no help, not even in the medicine, not even in man's resources, we need to run to the Lord. We need to run to the Lord. Last year, actually last week, we preached here about the death of King Uzziah. When the year in which King Uzziah died, where the prophet went, where the prophet was. He was in the temple. He was in the house of the Lord. And there, he saw the Lord. And there, he was able to see the ministration, the service, everything that happens in heaven. It, it, is a mom, it was a moment of intimacy. Now we are going through a moment where there is no human resource for us, but we will be preserved. The church, the faithful, the one who is hiding at the shadow of the Almighty, he will rest there, because there he will see the glory of God. Uzziah was a king that was very, a, a very powerful king. Uzziah was a king that brought a different dynamic to the army. He came up with a different uh, way of fighting. He brought new weapons. It was a moment of great, we could say, a moment of great, the nation was very prosperous. But in the same way that the nation went up, Uzziah went down because he stopped trusting in the Lord. He stopped hearing the voice of the Lord and keeping God's commandments. And in moments like this, where all the resource of the world is extinguished, where we do not have a place to run to, that's where we're going to go to the house of the Lord and there we will have the providence from God. There the Lord will provide for us the deliverance. It is in the arms of the Lord, as under the wings of the Lord, under the hands of the Lord. That's the moment in fellowship with God that we that the Lord will, will preserve our life, our health our children, everything that we have, and the church, the faithful church, 
I have no other place to run to. But the servant of God knows that only here. Look, I will cry out to God Most High, to God who performs all things for me, until the calamities have passed by. This calamity will pass, but there are going to be others that will rise up. Isn't it true? Because the word says that everything passes. Everything passes. Everything of this life will pass. The calamities will pass because they are fleeting. They are earthly things. But there is one thing that will never pass, which is the blessing of the God Most High. The mercies of the Lord of hosts, the mercies of the God Most High, they will never extinguish. So, in the, this moment in which we are leaving, we can run to the Lord. We are going to have services here, limited number of services here. There are a few services that have, are being cancelled during the week. But this is not a moment for us to grow weaker or to say, now, what are we going to do? It's not a moment for us to allow the things of the world to take the place of the things of the Lord. In the days in which we would have service, do your service at home. Take your family, gather them together and pray to the Lord. We are going to have message that are going to be available. Everything for the brethren to have a familial service. Let's do from this difficult moment a blessing for our lives. Let us bring a revival to our homes. Let us bring a spiritual warming in our homes. Who knows? God may use this. May be, this is the will of the Lord so that you may take control of, of your family and seek, uh, help them to seek the Lord. Sometimes it's difficult to do this. Sometimes it's easier, it's easier to do it alone, but as a group of families, it's difficult. But put a purpose in your heart. Lord, I want to do this. I want during these days where we don't have service, I want to bring my family to seek the face of the Lord more and more. Maybe you are alone. You don't have a family here. Then you can, you can look for us. We have here Skype, we have phone, we have video. Hey, you're there, we're here, it's no problem. You cannot be together. You can't be in the house of the brother. We're going to we can do this. We do this in Japan. We have uh, meetings through Skype. How can we not do this? You're here, you're there, we're here. We have deacons, we have ushers. You're alone, you feel the need to speak with the Lord. You want to receive a prayer, you can seek us. You can look for us. And we will be available to give assistance to the brethren, to pray with the brethren, have resources at the disposal. Everybody has a phone. It's, 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 this is not a problem. If you call someone to watch a movie and then you stay with them all, all, the whole night, they no, they see the sunrise up, having conversation, but to pray is difficult. Seek the Lord and you see how the Lord will answer your prayers. You see how the Lord will answer and bring a revival in your life. Isn't it true? The prophet went there in a difficult moment that Israel was going through without a king and now what are we going to do? A moment of uncertainty. How come a, a nation that depends on a king, uh, everything happens because of a king, and then the king dies? And what now? But the servant went to the temple. He went to seek the face of the Lord. And there the Lord manifested. In the moment in which the resources are run out, and human resources run out, that's when you, the Lord says, Now I'm going to show you who I am. And we know our God, that He is the God I am. He is all that we need. Amen. May this word speak to our hearts. Let's sing a song.
Bendito seja o nome do Senhor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord has shown in Revelation that a woman she came to the service tonight and she's been fighting and struggling with anxiety for a very long time. But right now, with this problem that we are going through, this virus, her situation got worse. And she cannot even sleep right now. She loses her sleep. But look, we have a God that can do all things. And we're going to pray for you so that you can deal with this problem, serious problem and anxiety. And you will, at this moment, you will trust in the Lord. You're going to say like King David said, I only trust in you. Amen. The moment is worthy of concern, but do, you can lose your sleep, sleep praying. You see how the Lord will bring comfort to your heart. You can't sleep, then kneel down and go pray. Go to speak with the Lord. Get into the cave of Adullam. And you see how the Lord will reveal himself to you. How God will reveal himself to you. And he has already delivered you. And you will see the result. The revelation is here. The Lord said that he is already giving you a deliverance. So you can now glorify the Lord. I'd like to invite Pastor Sabu to come here. The deacons and ushers. We're going to pray for the church as a group, so that we may all... It's already 8 8. I don't have a fever here. Oh boy. Very early. Nobody has a fever. Uh, I think that this this tour is going to re-educate everybody. We're going to have shorter services. Everybody will pay great attention be more united. You cannot, actually you cannot hug anyone, but you'll be closer to everyone. Amen. like to uh, pray for the church. We lay over hands. And now you will place your life before the altar of God. Whatever your, is your preoccupation, or family members from other countries, your health, place it all before God's altar. Enter into the cave of Adullam, because that's the place where the Lord will speak to us. Amen. Glory to God. Let's pray with the laying of hands. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Lord, we plead once again for the grace and mercy that is in the precious blood of Jesus to place us before your presence to plead Lord for once again that you have mercy on us mercy on, on your people because now this moment Lord it's a moment of affliction of calamities but we have been afflicted Lord but your word says that your help that our help comes from you Lord that made heaven and earth and your word tells that no evil will come upon us. No plague will come to our tents because you tonight have given order to your angels on our behalf to protect us in our path, Lord. I want to praise you and glorify your holy name because we know, Lord, that we doubt you, Lord. We won't be able to be victorious in the moment in which we are going through. But your word also says, Lord, that if you do not edify the house, in vain work the laborer if you do not protect the city in vain watches the sentinel and you lord will be it will be for us useless it will be to wake up early and sleep late because the lord is going to give the sleep to his righteous lord lord we ask that you pr uh, we pray that you bless this sister so that she have a night of sleep knowing that Though you have provided all things, the grace, the love and mercy will, mercy will follow her, knowing that she's now in a safe shelter under your wings. Protect the Lord by your word. And we ask, Lord, for your church, 
so that you also at this moment, Lord, make us uh, the Mount Zion, that we may not be shaken with those things, because in you, Lord, we trust. And you, Lord, we give you all the praise, hallelujah, and praise your holy name, because you know, Lord, that you have already prepared, Lord, for each one of us the victory. We pray to you for this service, for your people, for your church that got up and placed standing before our presence to adore your holy name because you, Lord, they trust in your grace and your love and your mercy. That's why, Lord, we ask them, take us home in peace. Give us a week, a blessed week by you, Lord. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. And let me say, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. The brethren may be seated. I want to say, peace to, I want to wish you peace of the Lord. Our next service is going to be on Thursday. We're going to have a service intersection for the Lord. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, we're going to have that period of 24 hours of prayer. So the brethren will have the topics there with John. Please your name on the board there. Choose your time to pray. Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, we're going to be praying to the Lord so that the Lord may give us a deliverance for 90 days until June, until the beginning of June. Amen. Until June. Amen. And to all the peace of the Lord.